All right, so we have the record on and we are officially going with our Live with Prima class. This is our ink and layer class and I started off playing around with these babies. I am not a stamper. I will be honest up front, I'm very mediocre, if that. Um, so for me to play around with a bunch of stamp sets was a little bit intimidating, but these are addicting. So. We have a lot to get through. I have a bunch of different ideas for using them. This is just one sample. Like I figured I'd better finish one project in class instead of having all these little ideas. Um, and this is probably my favorite way to use the stamps. And it's, I don't know if you're gonna catch the glimmer. I have a little secret for adding some glimmer and shine on this. So you gotta stick around because we're gonna do this. All right. So these are the ink and layer stamps. We have three different sets and they, if you're gonna pick a favorite, I don't know how you're gonna do it because I'll tell you why. So our first set, okay, so you know I ordered a separate set just to show you guys so they were neat and tidy. Is the camera out of focus? It drives me bonkers, I'm sorry. It has autofocus sometimes, there we go. Here's what my real stamps look like. <laughs> so I say this is a sign that you love your stamps when they look like this, okay? And um, you know, people are picking on me on the chat, so if I get distracted a little bit on the recording, it's not my fault. So um, anyway, this is a well-loved set and these are the brand new sets. Okay, so each set is going to come with outlines, uh, the full colored area. So this is like a block of the, I'm, I'm losing the word, but when you ink it, you get the full image shown right here. So you have the outline and then the full colored area. And then you have these other areas that are shadows or highlights, depending on the ink color that you use. There's a center and then that one has a leaf. So each set is gonna be a little bit different I should have told you the number for this one first. This is Bayou Flora, and that one's 583590. It's gorgeous. On the back of the packaging, trying to get rid of the reflection here, you're gonna see just a couple examples of how to use these stamps. And you can see the, the multicolors, so they look dimensional, it's really cool. All right, set number two is Glorious Flora. This one is gorgeous. It's like an outline plus a shadow in one. I love that one. These two together make the most beautiful rose. I think that's what it is, is a rose. I'm really bad at my flowers, but then you have a ton of outlines in this set. And here's another one that gives you a little bit of highlights or shadows. And this one is Glorious Flora. It's 583613. And that's it right there. Remember I said that beautiful one? That's it. All right, set number three is Fragrant Flora. And um, I have used this one a ton. It has some really cool, what I do like is most of the other sets have the large one with the shading or highlighting. This one has a smaller one with it too. So you can build your floral um, bouquets a little bit better. And that center, I've used this little stamp more than anything. So, um, and then there are three leaves in this one really fun. So on the back, that is this top one right here. And it's not, those leaves are not in it. It's just a, a sketch. So ignore that. They threw a different one in. All right. So those are the ink and layer stamps. There are three sets and Carrie can help you with those questions if you have them. So I have mine well loved out here and I wanted to show you, it's hard to see the in the packaging what this does. So this is an outline stamp. And it's, it's very well loved, you can tell, right? So you get the outline. Those solid stamps that I was losing the name for, that's what you get, okay? And then the highlights or the um, shadows, whatever, depending on the color you put on, they look like this. So they're really fun to put together. So these work well. So you, would, you could stamp this first and then this one and then you can add your center. And that's where you get your name, ink and layer. All right?
you guys have any questions on that. And you know what? I bet you're going to have even more ideas than I had. Um, I just, for one, I put way too much into my shows sometimes, and it goes a little crazy. So this time, I came up with an idea packet. And they're from really simple to a little bit more involved ways to use the stamps. But I'd love for you guys to share with me ideas that you have. So for this first one, I am going to take, these are just outlines, and I want to show you how fun they are. I always use a permanent ink for this just in case I want to go back and, and um, color it in. And I think I'm going to zoom in just a little bit so you can see the work better. Here we go. So we're going to have our permanent ink, and I'm just going to grab some of the outlines and just show you what I'm doing. Now, these are cling stamps. And as you can see, I stuck them to my finger. But if you have a stamp block, which Prima has amazing stamp blocks, <laughs> I'm just so lazy. I love just stamping quickly, but a stamp block is going to give you a really good impression. Okay? So for better results, use a Prima stamp block. And what I'm going to do is just take a couple of these and show you what they do in the, the outside... Um, outlining that you get. Um, so the reason I used a permanent ink here is so that if I wanted to go back with a watercolor or anything wet, there it's not going to blend in. Even if I went back with another uh, ink color, the permanent ink is going to stay put. And this is archival. And there, you can use stays on. I, I love the archival for this. So that's just tip number one. It's so easy, right? Stamp it and you've got beautiful outlines. Now, I have some samples I want to show you. So I hope this is a good way to kind of introduce these concepts. This is a floral frame. And there's going to be a little bit of a reflection because the mirror. I have windows right across from me. So this is seriously a like a five dollar frame um it had a matting and then i went and um stamped the mat i'm trying to get the focus better on this it's glass and I'm, I'm thinking it's not picking it up there we go so all i did is take the stamp from i want to say it was set number three right here and black permanent ink and I just went around the frame with it and I love it the way it is it's very clean it's very simple and yet it added something fun to the whole um, design it was way too white otherwise because I had done the center part first with these stamps and those are colored and layered and then I put this white frame on and it was boring so that's a really fun way, and that reminds me, we have a gallery wall art contest going on right now, and this is a great way to pull in some Prima and create some fun pieces. So I found this at Hobby Lobby, I used my coupon, and it was super cheap. So stamping just with black ink, and think of the creative ways you could do this. It's so cool. Okay, so that's one project that you can do. You know what I think would be cool? If you're going on vacation, you're going to the beach or some tropical place, this flower looks tropical to me. And how cute would that be to put your family picture in there and stamp your little frame? How about Carrie? Carrie needs to do that. She's going on vacation soon. All right. So that was idea number one. Okay. So I did that. You're going to find I love this idea. So I did a lot of <laughs> projects using it. Okay. So here is project number two. And this is a watercolor panel. Come on, focus. Please. Sometimes it's just not wanting to work with me. We'll, we'll see if we can get this. Um, it's a watercolor panel that I used oil pastels on. And then once it was totally dry, I just took my um, stamps. And this is where you don't want to use a stamp block. Because I took some of these images and I stamped on the front and then bent them to the side. So you see the design goes over to the side. I am not a perfect stamper. It 
it's okay if you screw up like I did. But how fun is that to kind of bring the pattern around the sides? So if you have gallery wrapped canvases in your home, that was kind of the concept behind this to kind of wrap the pattern over. And these panels are so inexpensive. You could totally make a bunch of these for your gallery wall and enter our contest. The deadline I think is May 1st. And you could add like a foil word on here or just leave it as is. How cool is that? So what I did is I pre-colored another one. And um, the watercolor panels, okay, when they first came out, I thought these are not going to hold up to the water that I'm going to throw at them because I can be really messy. But I just painted this one and it got a bit bubbly in areas where the adhesive is. And um, like it was puckering up to kiss me, right? And then it flattened out as it dried. So it's perfect. So I want to just show you how I bent those stamps around. I'm not going to do the whole thing. So let me pick out, we're going to use set number one. You know what I did? I had to go in and mark all my stamps. I couldn't remember what set went with what. I had them all organized, but I had this two-year-old come over and play with my stamps. And when she got done, they were all over, totally messed up. And um, I kind of need my stuff organized or I can't remember which shadows and highlights go with, with what. You know what? I actually didn't put my leaves in till last. I kind of did my floral shapes first, but that's okay. So this is a leaf from um, set number two. And I went in and marked them all with Sharpies now. So that little chicky poo when she comes over again, <laughs> she's not going to mess up my love. This is set number three. It looks like a hibiscus. And this one I'm going to bend over to the side. So, you know what? I am off camera. Let me fix that. So I'm just inking it up. And I'll probably just do one or two of these. Set it on. And then carefully bend it to the side. Is that showing? I hope it worked. There, I don't know if you have a really good way to do this. And I smeared a little bit of ink on that side. But basically, they're flexible enough so you can get away with doing this. Let me try one more. If you're a perfectionist, you may not like this. But if you want to try something fun, try it on like a cardboard box that you paint first and kind of get your technique down. I probably shouldn't have picked this one. This one's going to want to bend over both sides. Oh well. We're going to do our best. This time I might flip it up like this. And then see where the stamp is. And then slowly roll it. I think that's the way to do it. Ah! Oh, it's almost perfect. Look at that. Carrie, are you impressed? Alright. So basically... That's what you're going to want to do. Pull out some more leaves and fill it in and just have fun with this and stamp onto the sides so that you get um, a really cool canvas wrapped piece. And that's a great way to use these outline stamps. I'm going to make sure I put them back. So any questions on that? Really fun. I know it worked, Carrie, because anytime I'm on camera, I'm going to mess it up. And I couldn't believe it actually worked. And I messed up on this one, but I didn't care. I had so much fun doing it, and it looks so... I love it. Okay, so you could totally take, like, our foil words and put something cute on here and put this in a little girl's room or whatever you want to do. I need to get going. I have a lot of ideas for you. So number two taking the same idea, but let me find my white ink. Stamping with white ink on a black surface. Now, I know you guys have thought of this. So, um, my white ink is really dirty because I didn't clean my stamp well enough. So, if you're going to do a lot with white ink or, or embossing, I would buy two sets and save one for the lighter stuff that you do and then your ink pad won't look like mine 
Okay, so this is super cool. Not only can you stamp with white ink, but Prima has some um, pastel, let me grab them, pastel chalks. And I want to get one of the layered ones. So let me pull out these two. They layer together. I'm just going to flip this over and we're going to do a pastel on one, the solid one, and then come in with another pastel on the other one and see how it works. We'll see. If it doesn't work, it's okay. It kind of gives a cool image there, very ghosty effect. And I bet you can't even see it because it's so far away. There we go. Can you see that? So that's like the solid design. And then I'm going to go in with the highlight or the whatever you want to call it. Low light or highlight shadows and build up this rose. It's just a fun way to use the stamps. See that? On black. And they work really, really well with our pastel chalk edgers. So try that on a darker surface. You don't just have to stamp the outlines on white. Okay? All right, so that is this other little step out right there. All right, questions on that? That was set number, uh, I just messed up my stamp. I think that's this one. Okay, so the next one is not even using an outline stamp, but just stamping the two images. I need to just grab some white paper for that. Let's use the one I already had out here. And what we're going to do is pull in some fun colors. Okay, and I use set number two. So that was the stamp I just used, but I think I'm going to do it with a different one this time. So let's go ahead and try the pool. It's just a turquoise. It doesn't have to be a permanent ink for this, by the way. And if you are really good and you buy ink colors in like three shades, light, medium, and dark, oh my goodness, you are going to have the most fun with these sets ever. I don't even have one set of those. So I kind of struggled a bit with the real concept behind these stamps because they're made for light, medium, and dark um, inks that go together. So that's pool and now what I'm going to do is take clover and come in and add those um, shadows. And you can see the shape, how it matches, but it doesn't have to be perfect. That's what's so fun with these. You guys are just having a nice chat over there about ink pads and stuff that is okay and what I want to do is I think I need a center so out of set three I'm going to grab this little center I don't want to do it in these colors I think I might do white so this is how my ink pad gets dirty so I'm going to try this if it doesn't work it's okay but I think oh boy did I ever pick up the white ink there oh I love it do you see that? Okay, so already I'm getting like a dimensional flower and I don't know how to draw, so for me this is brilliant. Um, so, gorgeous, fun, and I think not only for a center, but you could totally go around and put little highlights here and there with the same stamps and um, just have some fun with that. Okay, now with the original, I then took a pen. Sorry about my arm there. So I just grabbed a pen that kind of coordinated. And we do have the outline stamps, but not every flower has an outline stamp. Okay? This one does by chance, but I don't want to use that. I'm just going to take, let me see. I'm going to just take the tip and randomly outline a little here and there and kind of make it more whimsical. So if you are a marker collector, this is another great way to pull out your markers and coordinate them with these stamps and your inks. They're so fun. So I think my original looks better. 
I kind of um, stamped it and then went in and kind of did a whimsical outline. Really fun. And just a different effect totally. Not using the outline, just the inside stamps. Okay, so the next sample, it's the same concept, but we're going to use different inks. And because we're using different inks, you are going to get um, a different effect with it. So we're going to go over here to our pink and purple. Now these are metallic chalk edgers. Let's go ahead and take, I'm looking for different. We're going to use this stamp set this time. So let's go ahead and do the pink. Oh, that is really pink. Blob that up really well. And then we'll just set it right here. Now the chalk edgers can move with water. So I'm trying to put my, my stamp away where my chalk inks are. I have to focus. <laughs> they, these can move with water where the permanent ink cannot. So that is really cool. We'll, we'll do something with that later. But if you wanted to get that wet and kind of move that color around, you can do that with the Prima Chalk Edgers. You cannot do that with the permanent ink. So this fits beautifully on here to create a gorgeous little cabbage rose. It's one of my favorite ones. Look how fun that is. Okay, are you guys as impressed as I am with these stamps? <laughs> Okay, so you could totally take an outline with this. You could um, add some leaves. I'm doing purple leaves. I hope that's okay. You could just have fun with this. And what I was saying was, um, you know how you can move that color? Let's grab that pink again. And I'm just going to pull off a little bit of the color. I just got to find a pink brush. So we have water brushes. If you've never used them, you need to get some. Oh my gosh. So I'm just lifting off a little bit of that pink color. And I think actually it might grab the purple too. Huh, the purple stayed pretty put. But you could go in there and blend that and create your own fun leaves and stuff. So that just shows a different idea um, with these are chalk edgers and these are the permanent inks. So the permanent inks are going to sit still, they're not going to move, and the chalk edgers will. You can get those wet and move that around. Okay? So no matter what um, kinds of inks you have, these stamps will work. Now, my next idea, I'm going to just be really fast with this. This is just showing you how versatile these stamps are. So we're going to take, I got to see which one I used. We're going to use oil pastels. Let's do, where's that really wild one? Oh, here it is. I say it's really wild. I'm going to take one of the oil pastels and just color this. It doesn't have to be perfect, and that's why I think I'm, I love this so much. Okay, and um, I'm going to move that around a bit. You do not have to get the stamp really wet. And if you feel like the color isn't everywhere, you can go back in with your um, chalk edge or uh, oil pastel and put a little bit more in there. So I'm going to dab it because I think that gives kind of a mottled look. I like that. All right. And you know what? Let's do this on watercolor paper. I've been using just copy paper for everything, but I want to show you, you get a different texture when you use watercolor paper. Um, I wouldn't suggest watercolor paper for every ink though because it's a lot of them are um, textured like this one okay so you can see there's some white variants in there now if that bothers you go in with your water brush and blend it all in just like that now to me I kind of like it so I think it adds even more fun design to the stamped image. So I'm going to leave a little bit of that white in there. Okay, and it's only because my paper's textured. That's why you get that effect. If I stamped that on here, it would be smooth. So I got that one, and now I'm going to go in with the um, highlight or the shadow, and I'm going to use a really dark crayon for that one. Let's see. Let's grab this one. 
Now, the first time I pulled out my stamps, they felt like they had a bit of a resist on the design. I don't know if it's because they are brand new, but they soon got over it and allowed me to put anything on it. So if your coloring is bubbling up a little bit, just stamp it a couple times and get the newness out of there. I think this is a different color. I think I'm not paying attention. But that's okay. You know what's cool about using the oil pastels on here is that you can mix your own custom colors. You can do shading on here if you want. Just wet it slightly once you um, have the colors you want. And now I gotta figure out how it goes. I think this looks good. Told you, this does not have to be perfect and that's one of the beauties. Ah! Oh, how cool is that? You're just gonna get so many fun images. So what we're going to do now is go back in and I'm going to pull out a different color for the, I don't think this is even the center that goes with that stamp. But that's, that's okay. We're going to have fun with it and it's going to work, I think. It's kind of big for this one. See my original? I used a littler one. I am obviously just shaking things up a bit. I love it! Look at that! I think I like this one better. So sometimes on camera when you're not paying attention you grab the wrong center, it actually works out better. <laughs> okay, so oil pastels, they work on these really, really well and they create beautiful images and uh, especially on watercolor paper. I think they're gorgeous on watercolor paper. So that's just a really quick one with that. Are you guys doing okay? Are you hanging in there? Okay, any questions so far? I'm moving on. Okay, so the next one I need to do on smooth paper. Some of these just work better on smooth paper. Um, so if you have a, a white cardstock or... Uh, I'm using copy paper, but it will bleed through. Just so you know, some of the inks will come through. Okay, so for this one, I got a ridge right here, right where the center of my camera is. Drive me back bonkers. So for this one, we're going to pull out uh, Versamark, and I got to get my stamp. And you know what? I cleaned the stamp over and over and over. But look, I messed up my ink pad because the first couple times it wasn't clean. So I may just go into that new set and steal it. And this is why you might want to get two sets of your favorites and save one of them for the really light um, inks or Versamark or something. If you're really into doing some of these um, techniques, I am so glad I have two sets now. These are going to be my messy, dirty ones. And I'm going to save these brand new ones for um, ideas like this. So we're going to juice this up. Okay, have you used uh, like a embossing ink before? That's what this is. I hope I don't lift that black off because I've like contaminated my whole pad. <laughs> I even tried to clean it up. Okay, basically we're good. And we're gonna take that and we're just gonna set it on here. If you've used embossing ink before, you know you, you just are looking for a wet, shiny, design which I'm not sure if that will even catch the light it might not it is there okay and then what I'm going to do is take mica powder now I should do this on black and white at the same time and I think I might do that right now it's the same exact technique just two different effects so let me get this going and I want the smoother side of the cardstock, so I'm flipping it over. I don't even know if you can see there. You can see a little bit, I think, on the black. It's shiny. So that's all embossing ink is going to do is create this clingy, shiny stuff. So I'm going to open up my mica powder. And I'm going to just grab a piece of paper to catch the extra. Just in case we have extra so I don't have a huge mess. 
And what I'm going to do is take a special little fuzzy brush. I save one brush just for my micas. And grab some of that and then just, I dab the first time I apply anything so that I don't smear my design. Just like that. Okay. Now I will say, I think this technique works better on black than it does on white, but it's still kind of cool to do on white. You are going to end up with this, and I have some bleed through, but it has a really fun shimmery flower. And I think on certain projects, this would be so cool without adding a lot of dimension. It's kind of subtle, but classy at the same time. So let me try that on black. Oh, I'm really making a mess here. You see how much I popped out of there. Okay, so you can, I'm not sure if the camera's catching it, but basically um, it has covered the whole design and then you can brush the rest off. And I like that better on the black because I think it comes off, I'm just gonna use my hands. It comes off better normally on black than it does on white and I think that it really pops. So how fun is that for the outlines? And it's soft and it's shimmery. It's really cool. So try that with these outline stamps too. They're amazing with this technique. Okay, so that was Versamark and Mica. We did both white and black. Do you guys have any questions about that one? Here's my original white one and then my black. Okay, so the next one we're gonna do, I don't wanna show you my sample because I had a dirty stamp and it really, <laughs> it really messed it up. But what I'm gonna do is take, I need smooth paper. We can go ahead and um, go back to our sample page. I have a little bit of room left here. I'm going to just take that same stamp just because it's out and it's clean. We're going to go ahead and use the embossing ink again. And you know what? This isn't my original idea. We've been embossing things. Oops, and I went off a little bit, but that's okay. Um, forever. Like, I remember teaching this years ago. But we didn't have stamps like this. Um, so... It's kind of a just a fun way to use. I want to make sure I got it wet enough because the first time I did this, it didn't get wet enough. Um, it's wet. And then we're just going to put some embossing powder on there. Now, if you use clear, it's going to show the color of the paper behind you. If you use white, you're always going to have a really nice solid white floral um, design once you do the embossing. Or you can use colored, of course. Um, so let's dump that back in. I only have clear on me. I don't know where my embossing powders are. I think when I moved, I lost everything. So let's zap this real quickly. It's like magic in front of your eyes. It melts really quickly. Done. Done, and it's a little shiny. I want to make sure it dries really quickly. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to make sure it's done. I'm just going to take this marker and go over it. And this is a pretty permanent color filled marker. Please work. Look at that. You could use anything on top of this watercolor. You could do the, um, the oil pastels. You can do, I think watercolor works the best. But I thought I would try this with the pigment marker. And I love how the design kind of pops through like that. Okay. We're having trouble with focus. So I'm going to try and keep this black ink pad in here. And the focus goes out. And I apologize for that. So using the outline stamps with, we did it with Versamark and the mica but you can also do it with the verse mark embossing and it 
it, it's a really fine design, but the embossing powder is fine, so it creates a great resist. How cute is that? Okay, so just think of the different ways you could do this. It'd be so cool. My original sample um, is, you know, it just shows you how even the permanent inks can go over and that resists that like that. Okay, I have one more, and this one has a project to go with it, but it's very simple. Oops, I'm supposed to keep the black ink pad. It keeps it centered and focused. So basically what we're going to do is stamp the background with the oil pastel. I'm afraid to move things because, because of that. Let's do one of the outline ones. Okay, so we haven't done this one yet, have we? Um, we're going to go ahead and this, this is going to create a three-dimensional effect. So the background is not that important. And then we're just going to color it. Now, I'm just going to take my chalk edger because it's simple and it's close by and I think I just got it dirty. I had another color on my water brush. You really should clean your water brush and your inks after you use them and maybe your stamps. Don't do what I do. I, I then come up with custom colors like that. Super simple. I colored it in, but then what I want to do is take that same stamp and I get into my watercolor paper pad here. I want to stamp it again and watercolor it. Yeah, I'm moving my inks all over. So we're going to stamp it with the permanent ink. Plunk it on there. Okay. And then we're going to go in. I have some watercolor confections. Let me see what colors I have. Well, I need to do pastels. Let me just pop one open here. This one will work. These are well loved, can you tell? I love just creating my own little colors up in the wells. So <clears throat> I have some already created with purple and pink. But I like to gray them down a little bit. And I need to find <clears throat> the gray. I think I have a frog in my throat. So I'm going to pull out a little bit of this silver and gray these down. Just, I love it. I think they're softer and sweeter that way. So what I'm doing is I'm just going in here and coloring. And you can prep your surface first by getting water on there. And then when you add this, it will bleed in and give you a true watercolor effect. I'm not sure I like that color. I'm going to mix in a little bit of this blue. But I want it I want it to look watercolored. I don't want it to look like I sat with a marker. I want it to mix. The beauty of watercolor is how pretty and soft it is and how the colors blend so well. So what I would do now is let this dry and then I would cut that out, pop it up on a three on a foam dot and apply it over that one. And what you're going to get then is a really cool 3D effect and I kind of twisted this when I plunked it on there. It looks so fun to have an image stamped and then the exact same image popped up. Okay, are you guys loving that as much as me? Maybe not. But what I did is um, it, you can create your own embellishments that way. And I think it's so fun how creative or how versatile these flowers are. So you remember that pink... Um, panel I had. Well, I did start stamping on it and I may finish that, but I watercolored a ton of these flowers on watercolor paper and I cut them out and they're not perfect, but I kind of just stuck to pastels and I think I'm going to take these and pop them up with uh, foam and create a little home decor piece. I don't know. What do you guys think of that? I love the dimension it makes. I love that you can create like a wreath on a card with this. 
and all it really cost you was the paper, right? So this is the favorite, the favorite activity my granddaughter and I do. Um, I sit and stamp a bunch of the outlines and then we sit and watercolor them. And sometimes she goes a little crazy. Some of these might not be hers. I will, oh, I have hers over here. She, she likes past really bright colors. I gotta find them because you're gonna love it. And she's six. So here are mine. I'm really into pastels. And here are hers. <laughs> she did this on her own. So she's like, Nana, just stamp a bunch of flowers for me. And then she sits and colors them herself. And I, I told her I have stamps that will do that shading. And she's like, I think I can figure that out. <laughs> Isn't that cute? So we're going to cut these out and add them to a card and create kind of our own floral elements. Isn't that fun though? And I can't say that this is my original idea either. Our design team has done so many cool um, projects with these ink and layer stamps, but I think this one where you're stamping and then you're watercoloring, probably my favorite one ever. So stamp, watercolor, cut out, layer if you want, and create dimension. Um, so that leaves me about 20 minutes, so I want to actually create the card. Did I throw a bunch of ideas at you? There's so many more you could do. I had to like just pick and choose which ones I could do today. It's crazy. And I thought it would take a little bit longer than this, but I'm so glad now I have time to make the card with you guys. So what we're going to do is take our, by the way, if I finish this, I'll post it online. Okay, I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do because I thought maybe I should have centered it but it might be too busy with all that stamping. I gotta figure out what to do, but these watercolor panels, you have got to get them. They're amazing. All right, so I want to we'll keep some black in the picture so we don't go spastic here. We're gonna use the eight by eight watercolor paper pad. It's 847739. And let me just pull a piece out. Okay, someone said I discovered stamping. I just don't ever consider myself a, a really accomplished um, stamper. I'm honest. I'm probably too lazy to really clean and do what I need to do. I love just stamping and coloring. So this paper pad is too big to put under the camera so I'm tearing my piece out. I know it's all white on white here. We're going to fix that soon. So you guys are probably going to get so tired of seeing me stamp and color. But basically what I'm going to do is create a card out of this. And I think it helps to fold it first to kind of know where the, the seam is going to be. Okay. Oh, Carrie, I did mess up there. I know it, it's messing up. I'll start stamping soon so that we don't have all white on here. I just got to figure out. So I use this stamp, and I'm going to use my fingers a ton because we're going to stamp just fast. And basically what I'm going to do, oh, I can use different stamps for this one. We're just going to go ahead and we want to kind of do an arc of flowers like this. And it's okay if they go over the back. Remember, we're doing kind of that canvas wrap thing. It's okay if they go over. I think that's really fun to see. If I got a card to see that it was the image was carried over like that. Okay, that was stamp number three. I'm messing up my stamps. Let's pick out this one. This is gorgeous. It's like a cabbage rose. So all I'm doing is inking up here and kind of filling in here and there with my stamps. I, I don't want to overthink it. We're just going to have fun. So maybe here. I know I'm going to be putting a big prima flower right here. So I'm not too worried about 
stamping there, but I do like having a couple flowers go off screen, so to speak, like I was just doing. <laughs> okay, maybe, did you guys see any of the little tiny flowers like this one yet? I might fill in a little here and there with that. And I, that's why I love that we have these because they work well for creating um, little clusters and bouquets. I think that's good. Do you guys think that's okay? Now we're going to do leaves. And I would stick to probably one leaf type. I used this really bold one last time. I don't know if you can tell. It has a wider border. I don't know that I want that. I think I want the skinny border. I'm fat shaming the stamp over there. Sorry. I used it on my other one and I thought the border just showed too much black. Once I actually started watercoloring, I didn't like it as much. I think this one's perfect though. What do you guys think? I think I need a leaf right here. Even if try to make sense with them like that they actually do come out from a flower but don't don't worry if they don't if you just need a leaf here or there to fill in a spot i think you're good to go i wouldn't worry too much about it okay i think i kind of need something right here but i also didn't i can't put another leaf there it'll look dumb it won't look right so I'm going to grab just a small flower. Let me look for one. Oh, I have that double leaf, or this one. I'm going to try it up there. Oh my goodness, I wish I had used that one. That's okay, we can still put a couple in here. Okay, let me find that small flower again. I'm going to just sneak a little bit of this here and there, maybe. Just what all I'm doing is stamping just part of it and only pushing down part of it. It's just gonna be like a little filler um, where I have a lot of white space I don't like. Okay, so I did kind of an arc. And don't worry about it. If you get an awkward spot, just move your flower and your embellishments around. So now what we're gonna do is go ahead and get purple. I need purple purple watercolors in my water brush and I'm going to clean it this time and all you do to clean it is um, squeeze out a little bit on paper towel like that. So I want to test some of these colors. Oh that's blue. You see why my my um Areas are so messed up, my reservoirs. That's, I want it more lilac. Oh, I think I need pink. That's what it was. Throw a little pink in and you get a really fun color. Now, my original card is really light. So, I may go in here and just push the color a bit. I have a lot of water in this. And I don't want all my color, all my flowers to be the same color. So I'm going in and just dabbing. Oh, this one's really bright though. I need to lift some of that, which is a good way to show you what I do if I get too much. I'm gonna go in there and just dab that up with paper towel. If you actually drop some water on there, it'll pick up even more. So I'm just touching color and then pulling some of that watered down purple. And that way each flower will be slightly different. So I pounce the pink and then I go in and grab some of that. And so each flower will coordinate because it has that base color, but then it also has um, a touch of whatever color you, you did over there. Now it's getting really, really light. I have, so this is why my daughter, granddaughter and I just sit in color for hours. It's really fun. So I'm 
pulling it a little bit more pink than I did on my original. And the reason is I have this little um, basket of flowers that are separated out from the rest of their flower family because I probably used them. And um, I throw these leftover flowers in a basket and then I just use those on my cards when you only really need one or two. So that is what I, I am doing with the this card. I had one really nice purple flower left so I kind of picked colors that would match it. And for the second card I found this flower which is it's not as pink as the camera shows, okay, but it, it has purple in it. But because it's pinker than my other one, I'm going to grab more of this pink color right here before I add, or when I add the purple. Does that make sense? I So I'm just pulling in a little bit more of that fuchsia color than I would have on my other card. My other card is very purple, lavender. It does have a bit of pink, um, and this one I'm pulling more of that darker just to pull in those tones, which shows me I probably need a little bit of that pink right here. So once you're done coloring your flowers, oh, this one's way too pink. And you can see I am not paying attention to the, um, the borders very much. There, I just squirt on some water and dab it up with the paper towel. I'm not really staying in the lines is what I should have said. I don't really care about that because it's watercolor. Alright, so now what I need to do is I'm going to color my leaves. So clean out your brush. I already have some green in here and I don't know what it's from, but I'm going to grab like this lime we could totally make this one fun. Not dark and, and soft, but like springy green. What do you think of that color? And that's why I like mixing them and kind of holding them with the project. I think I like it. I may hate it once I put it on. Oh, I like it. It's a very fun, springy, fresh green. Now, I don't want all my leaves to be exactly alike. So again, I'm touching the green. That one I touched way too much. Let me pull a little bit of that into some of the others and then dab some of that off. Woo, baby! That one was very green. I'm fixing it. Don't, don't pull all that green in at once. <laughs> but you know what? That's the fun part in this is that these watercolor confections are very forgivable and this technique is very forgiving. So um, I think the, they get too boring though if I just stick with that one palette right here. And that's too much. That's okay. We'll make it work. The confections keep blending um, once you re-wet them. So this side has a lot more spring green like the darker hunter and this one is limier. We'll just go in there. I think I'm good. Everything's colored. So now what I'm going to do is create a background color. And I, I don't want it to be too um, off, like a totally different color. I want it very soft and very subtle so it coordinates but um, it doesn't distract. So I think what I'm going to do is use my leftover purpley stuff. But I'm going to bring in, I should clean it off. I have green on it. See my problem? This is why I'm a failure at stamping. I never clean my stuff. I'm going to bring in this silvery gray. And that's from the Decadent Pies. It's the only set with metallic in it. I love it. Okay, so I've created a new concoction. And I'm going to test it on the back first. Oh! <gasps> I think I love it. It's kind of a steely purple. And you know what else? I'm not going to do that whole background with that tiny little brush. I'm pulling out the mega brush. Okay, and I'm cleaning it first. I've learned my lesson. So we're going to just 
paint away here and I always would um, sample your colors on the back of your project. So I'm doing it on the back of the card here, obviously. Kind of like that. It's very fun. And then you can start doing the front. And I seriously might just paint over the whole thing and not worry about the boundaries. I might not paint over my leaves as much, but I'm not going to worry about the lines. We're just having fun with this. So you can see how that color has really been toned down. And it may even have a bit of glimmer. It depends on how much I watered it down. It may have a little bit of glimmer so that when it dries, I get some of that sparkly silver in there. All right, that's it. What do you guys think of that? So this is one of our new flat head brushes. The new pack comes in a, a three pack and they have the super wide, a medium, and then a finer tip. And this is one of the older ones. Um, I cannot live without these. You guys, if you don't have these, you need them. Okay, so that's watercolor confections. And don't, don't sop up your leftover um, colors unless you think you'll never use them. I let them dry in there and then I pick it up next time and add color and have fun with it. So there's my card. Now what I want to do, it's kind of wet. I might have to zap it. We'll let it air dry while I pull out the embellishment. So what I did is I'm just going to grab my stamp set. I made this for a Mother's Day card, but since I, I only have my mother-in-law left, um, my mom has passed. I want to create this one for a friend of mine who's kind of having a, she's going through a rough time right now. And I think that's so sweet with the cards. We make all these cards and tags and then we don't know what to do with them. I'm starting to give them away. Um, that's what they're really supposed to be for anyway. But this stamp set is from Vintage Emporium and it has all the alphabet plus a banner. And it's super cute. The item is 584733. So what I'm going to do, I've already pre-stamped. I am going to just create a little banner and put her name on there. Now that's great if the name is a couple letters. If it isn't a couple letters, um, you could do her initials or a monogram or say hi. Good thing I saved that green, huh? I forgot to watercolor my banner. And seriously, that's it. Two seconds. Um, to do that baby. Just make sure it matches. And then you cut it out. I already cut out my, my, um, I stamped and cut out the, um, letters. So I'm giving this to my friend Anne. I didn't think you needed to see me stamp, right? You guys saw me stamp the whole show. And I know this is going to be wet, but we're, we're going to deal with it. So I would just stamp out, stamp your banner. I can't talk now. You know those people who cannot talk and chew gum? I guess I cannot talk and cut. Stamp your banner. <laughs> and then we're going to pop it up. And normally I stamp way, or I cut way better than this, but... We're going for speed, not precision here. Um, we're going to pop this up with foam dots and just kind of create a little focal point on our card. And I think I'm going to use this stamp set as much as I use my um, ink and layer. Was I off camera again? Sorry. I'm going to be in trouble. I keep pulling it closer to me. Shape up. Okay, so I know it's wet, but we're we can do this. We're just gonna pop it up on foam dots as soon as I find them, and then start decorating it. So we need maybe five minutes because I've lost my foam dots. Seriously, I said everything out ahead of time. Everything. Like I pre-teach the class so that I'm not messed up and I still lose stuff. I'm not going to put this on yet because I want to get my flower on. But this this is going to be glued on here, her name. 
and it's going to set somewhere over here. It's super cute like that, isn't it? But I want to put my flower on first and figure out like where everything is before I fill in the white space with this. So I have my flower. I pre-cut dot um, leaves already, and I think I might switch out this time to, I, I love this, but is that going to be too busy? Probably. We'll just stick with this one. This leaf die set is amazing, and it works really well with our Bloom Girl A4 watercolor paper, which is what I used on this one. It does not work with the thicker watercolor paper, but it works with that Bloom pad. I have my butterfly. Now, I have showed you guys before a little technique for using Fabri-Tac and foil. I'm going to just do it on one, and then um, and then you, I won't do the rest, just to save some time. So what you want to do is squirt some Fabri-Tac on packaging. I have to find pack plastic I'm throwing away. Hang on. I'm digging here. I may just use this paper. I normally use plastic, something you're going to throw away. So I have Fabri-Tac on here and I'm just going to put it on the butterfly with my finger where I want a little bit of silver foil. Then make sure you get it off your finger before you touch the foil. And I keep just a scrap of our Prima foil, something I've already used for other projects because you want a very distressed look. So you don't care if it's perfect. You are going to just press that baby on there and pull it off. If the glue's not ready, you're gonna know it because it will either be too sticky or nothing will stick. It's, it's not super difficult to figure out. You'll probably just need to try it once. And now I have a glimmery butterfly with just a touch of like, distressed foil so it's not perfect on there okay can I just do my leaves since I got it out everything's sticking to me I'm not sure I got enough Fabri-Tac for my leaves it's really fun to do this and now I've tried this with other adhesives and it does work I just kind of like the Fabri-Tac and using my fingers and you will get some spidery pieces in there. That's okay. So I have the Fabri-Tac on. I'm cleaning my fingers first. And Fabri-Tac just rubs off of your fingers. Okay? And then um, take your foil. And again, I'm using that same section I've already used so that it doesn't put a solid piece of silver. I don't want that look. I just want a touch of silver. I think they were kiss. This one might be a little too dry, but you get the idea, right? And if you don't like those cobwebs, you can go in there with a little pin and kind of poke, poke them out. So I have my two leaves, and they have a touch of silver on them. They're going to go, like, right here. And my butterfly is going to go up here. And I kind of just set everything on to make sure... I like where it's going. Now I also added a loop of our, our linen thread. So I have a bunch of different colors. I just gotta find one that I'd like. You know, I may just go with white. I might go with purple. So all I do for this is I kind of loop it around my hand three times. That looks good. And then you can shape it once you get it on here. That might be way too big. I got that one piece not behaving. It's like not sitting very well. I try to tuck my ends, like put them over here where I know the flower is going to go. But it's okay if they're showing too. It kind of adds a little bit of character. I like that. I may move it around a little bit here and there. So now that I got most of it on, I'm going to go ahead and take the flower and kind of hold down that thread with it. Was that right here? 
You guys are my brain. See that one piece doesn't want to behave? It's like that one child you have every day. We're just going to work with it. It's okay. And the leaves, throw a little bit of fabric tack right on the tip, tuck it under, and then I kind of bend it up. I don't want them flat on my card. And you know what? I know I can't mail this card in an envelope. It's okay. I could put it in, um, what am I thinking? Like a, a small box, a priority box. I think I want foam on this. What's the chances I can find the foam? Aha! So we're going to pop the butterfly up so he like looks like he's coming up. He's ready to take off. I still might put a little bit of Fabri-Tac right here. And I know the more I move, the more the focus gets messed up. I'm going to hold still for a second. Can you guys see that okay? Okay. And if any of these little threads bother you, you can clip them and tuck them. I am going to come in here and do some management over on this side um, to make that, that bugger stay put. So... I have this, and remember I said I, I just needed to know where it was going to be. I did not have a leaf there last time, and I don't like the green on green. Do you guys like it? So I think I'm going to bring a little purple in here and just darken that. I may have just messed it all up, but that's okay. I'm not going to stress about it. We're going to go ahead and just tack this down and hopefully catch those threads so they behave. So I think I want it right here. Come on. I like them perfect. And it is wet, so guess what? <laughs> Try your thing before you glue stuff on. Here we go. It's just going to pop up on me, you guys. You can just laugh. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and try and glue the little letters on. And um, I have a, a little secret to show you on how I added more glimmer after this. And don't tell Carrie it's not by Prima. Ow! For real, everything's sticking to my fingers. When you do that foiling technique and you use your finger for fabric tack, clean them off because everything's going to stick to your hand after that. Seriously, it's just bad. Okay, so I want to add a little bit more shimmer. I have some sequins. You guys love sequins? Okay, I'm now 10 minutes over. These are beauties. Okay. They're so fun. Seriously, Carrie, I'm almost done. I promise. I have this um, quick stick that I got. I have the most trouble with sequins, and I'm picking them up with my hand all the time, and I got that. So I'm going to cheat and put a little dab of Fabri-Tac, and um, you can pick these up. Now, I did find the Fabri-Tac wants to hold them sometimes, but I'm going to go ahead and apply those. If you just grab a little bit of Fabri-Tac, you should be okay. And then I'm not getting so much on my finger. I'm still getting a little here and there. So I think I want an odd number of sequins. Let's do maybe five. These are iridescent. Okay, see, I'm at the bottom of the barrel and I just want to come up now. This is why I made it do with my fingers. You put one up there. So these are just iridescent sequins. You can get them anywhere. I just think they add that little special touch. Plus you can put them in the centers of your flowers. How cute is that? Okay, the last little final touch. Um, I've been wanting this Wink of Stella pen forever. And I finally just broke, I just got it. And it was a little difficult to figure out how to use. So Google it. There's a YouTube 
um, video on what to do. It basically has a ring and once you pull it out it, you can prime it. This is like adding a touch of shimmer without getting all messy. You hardly ever, it, it has a push reservoir. And you know what? It may be really hard to see. I'm just going in my flowers and maybe a little bit of banner of the banner and I'm adding a, it's like a fine mica glitter and it's going to make the card just that much more special trust me can you see the shimmer at all I would say it is a little difficult to see on camera but in person it's going to be stunning I don't even know if that is showing up for you well trust me okay it's gorgeous and once you get shimmering everything you're gonna want to do the whole card but you have to practice a little restraint put it away because your time is up okay so that is it and what I would do is let it finish drying and then flatten it um, it will dry flat and then you have a beautiful card that you can send to one of your friends or your mom so ink and layer stamps do you guys have any questions I will be on if you have any questions but I want to just tell you we have a couple of announcements and um, I said I was gonna flip the camera around the okay so the wink of Stella comes in multiple colors it's not a prima item and that's okay this one is clear. Um, I think it it leaves a silvery shimmer. So to me, I think it's I ordered the clear. I think it's more of a I don't know if you can see the color on the tip. It's more of a sh silvery. Can you see it on there? Barely but it has a silvery shimmer. It says it's clear, but I think it shows up. It's definitely not gold. It's not really iridescent. It's, it's more of a platinum silvery color, okay? But it, it's, it, you can put it on any color. It doesn't really change the color of the product underneath it. Just a bit, okay. They have that in multiple colors, so I just got one to try it out. I think I'll get some more colors later. So I do have announcements, and I was going to pop the camera up for that. Okay, but I want to say thank you to everyone first and stop the record, and then we'll go ahead and do the announcements, okay?